The reason why somebody's hair is low porosity is due to how the cuticles lay and how they're packed together. When you put a black cuticle next to a high porosity cuticle underneath the microscope, they literally basically look the same. They use this in crime scene investigations to identify suspects at a scene. So if they find like a hair strand at a crime scene, this is what they use to identify the race of the suspect. But there are so many people that are hell bent convinced that their hair is low porosity and I just want to like grab them and shake them and say girl you're not low porosity hey there guys it is natural Nadine here and I'm back with another video today's video is going to be about why your natural hair is not low porosity I know it's very provocative okay it really gets the people going all jokes aside I was umming and ahhing about making this video because I know how porosity how much porosity like means to the natural hair community but honestly we're gonna get into it. Just for a bit of background, I am a chemical engineer. I have studied chemistry. I've also worked for a consumer goods company that have been involved in our research and development for hair care formulations, which really involves understanding the anatomy of the hair, which is why a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about in this video, they are gonna be very science-based because that's my background and that's what I started to base my natural hair routine on. But regardless, this isn't about like my qualifications or what I have on paper or what I've done because there's things that I'm about to kind of tell you, you don't need to be like a scientist to understand the fundamentals of what I'm about to say basically. I really wanted to make this video because I feel like when you first go on your natural hair journey, there's so many different opinions on what you can do and what you can't do with your hair, what you should and you shouldn't do and what your porosity is. And you're kind of swayed so, this for me is a very unbiased looking at the facts. So without me rambling on, which I've already feels like I've rambled on for ages, let's get into the video. First thing I'm gonna address is what is low porosity hair? So low porosity hair is described as hair that doesn't readily absorb water and treatment. And because it doesn't readily absorb those treatments, it retains moisture very well. The reason why somebody's hair is low porosity is due to how the cuticles lay and how they're packed together. Having a look here at what a hair cuticle looks like under a microscope, these are what hair cuticles look like from a low porosity, medium porosity, and a high porosity hair cuticle. So as you can see from the low porosity hair cuticle, the cuticles are flat, closed, and sealed, and that is one of the main characteristics of low porosity hair. I say that's one, that's the only char main characteristic of a low porosity hair is that your cuticles are closed, they are sealed, and they're tightly packed, and that's exactly why it's difficult for it to absorb moisture, treatment, that type of thing and that's why it retains moisture really well now if you look at a high porosity cuticle the cuticles are slightly raised that's exactly why high porosity hair readily accepts moisture and water and treatments and products and also doesn't retain those very well because as easily as that moisture enters the hair it can also slip through the cracks of the raised cuticles now that I've shown you what these cuticles look like under a microscope let's take a look at what a black person's hair cuticle looks like under a microscope So this is an African hair cuticle underneath a microscope. They use this in crime scene investigations to identify suspects at a scene. So if they find somebody's hair follicle, like a hair strand at a crime scene, this is what they use to identify the race of the suspect. So this is literally what a black hair cuticle looks like under a microscope. And as you can see, the cuticle is naturally raised. It's literally genetically and in our DNA that an African hair cuticle is naturally raised. And when you compare it to Asians and Caucasians, there's been lots of scientific studies done. Science Direct is a really good website if you guys wanna check those out to have a look at some research papers that have been done on real people, large sample sizes, cuticles by race, in which from a lot of these research articles, you will see that Asian people have the lowest porosity. They tend to have a thicker amount of cuticles because you don't just have one layer of cuticles by the way you'll have like multiple layers so Asians tend to have a thicker layer of cuticles they tend to be more densely packed and they tend to be close and you can really tell by the way Asian hair looks they have extremely low porosity hair for Caucasians it can vary but for black people it is always consistently a raised cuticle which is exactly why I say that black people realistically your hair is not going to be low porosity because of the way the natural anatomy of your hair is your cuticles are going to 
to be raised, you're probably going to have high porosity hair. When you put a black cuticle next to a high porosity cuticle underneath the microscope, they literally basically look the same. So there are a few characteristics of our hair that you can easily tell are high porosity. For example, the fact that our hair gets dry very quickly. Somebody with low porosity hair, for example, an Asian person, their hair retains moisture so well they don't even need to moisturize it. The very fact is that a lot of us naturalistas need to moisturize our hair in between wash days. We need to moisturize our hair constantly shows that it's high porosity because we're not retaining that moisture. If we had low porosity hair, we wouldn't need to moisturize our hair because that is literally one of the characteristics. Low porosity hair retains moisture very well, which is why you don't see a lot of Caucasian and Asian people sent using moisturizers and leave-ins and that type of thing because their hair just doesn't need it because their cuticles seal that moisture in so so well so if you think you're low porosity but you're constantly having to moisturize your hair it literally doesn't make sense let's say you do a full wash day your hair is super moisturized how long until you have to wash your hair again because if your hair's dry in like a couple of days or if your hair's dry the next day and you need to re-moisturize it your hair is very high porosity you are losing moisture very quickly if you can push it a couple of days you might not be as high porosity as someone who needs to moisturize daily but that's still very high porosity hair because you're not retaining that moisture another reason why we can why it's easy to tell that black people's hair is high porosity is like I said the cuticle is raised which gives us this kind of kinky look Asians and Caucasians hair's cuticle tends to be smooth and closed like I said and because of that the light bounces off of their hair a lot more meaning that their hair appears to be a lot more shiny it appears more lustrous where with black hair hair because the cuticles are raised the light doesn't bounce off of it in the same way which gives us that kinky look that look that's not as shiny it's not as like lustrous I mean it's still as gorgeous by the way I'm not saying that as a negative thing that's literally just the scientific characteristics of our hair is that that's how it looks you know the shine that I'm talking about you know the shine that I'm talking about so now let's talk about the hair porosity test and I actually did try it myself up until I realized what am I doing <laughs> and basically it's this test and you put a clean strand of hair in if your hair floats it's low porosity if it sinks it's high porosity which is absolutely factually wrong something floating in water hasn't got anything to do with porosity the only thing that determines whether something floats or sinks is its density relative to the environment that it's in in normal terms if it's less dense it's gonna float if it sinks that means your hair is more dense than the water that you're putting it in so that has nothing to do with porosity. If your hair sinked or if it floated or if it stayed in the middle, that's your hair density. And in actual fact, more porous materials, so materials that tend to have a lot more holes in, gaps in, and that can absorb water tend to be more lightweight. So if you think of a sponge, a sponge is gonna float in water, not because it's low porosity, but because it's less dense, because it's high porosity, because it's got loads of space for air to flow through. So if your hair floats, it's actually more likely that it's high porosity than it is that it's low porosity but you can't really use that test to determine anything other than whether or not your hair is more or less dense than the water you put it in a lot of people also ask the question if my hair is not low porosity then why do products sit at the surface there's so many reasons as to why products would sit at the surface but i'm gonna literally just say the main one which is equilibrium i don't really know how to say that in non-science terms but you know what equilibrium is basically equilibrium is in equal concentration on each side it basically means that your hair is going to take up what it needs and when it feels like it's got what it needs is not going to allow more product in naturally now with any kind of like equilibrium especially in science terms there are things that you can do to get to push the equilibrium to one side for example adding heat if you add heat that's going to open your cuticles and what you thought was a product sitting at the surface of your hair will actually penetrate because you added that heat or you can manually work it in with your hands that's another way to kind of force the equilibrium I, don't, I feel like I'm talking in science terms it's really not that complex but I'm trying to you know what I mean you can force that product into your hair or you can't if your hair has had enough it's had enough okay and just because a product is sitting at the surface of your hair one doesn't mean your hair hasn't actually absorbed the product nine times out of ten your hair has absorbed the product it's just absorbed enough for what it can handle and trying to force more product into your hair can actually
actually do more damage than good. So that's one of the reasons why products will sit at the surface, not to mention things like product buildup. If you use oils as well, a lot of a lot of products are formulated with water. They're gonna form those hydrophobic beads on the top of your hair and you're gonna think, oh my gosh, I've got such low porosity hair, this stuff isn't absorbing into my hair, but really it's because the stuff isn't mixing, okay? It's not mixing, it's not gelling, it's all sitting on top of each other, one after the other, and that's exactly why you're getting this beading effect on top of your hair. So the next thing that we're gonna address is why our hair takes so long to get wet. So if we don't have low porosity hair, why does our hair take so long to get wet? When I say so long, I mean, how long is long really? Like, okay, you stood under the shower for like two minutes and your hair took two minutes to get wet. That's not that long, firstly. And secondly, how long your hair to get takes to get wet, you can't use it as an indication of your porosity because there's so many different things that go into that. For example, there's a hydrophobic lipid layer on the surface of everybody's hair regardless that repels water. Your hair is not designed to instantly take in moisture and that lipid layer is there to stop your hair from taking up too much moisture in one go and losing its, its elasticity and being prone to breakage so it's there for your protection that's one reason another reason is the product i see people they'll go into the shower with their dirty hair they're, they're running the shower under their head for like 10 minutes and they're like oh my gosh my hair's not taking up the water it's because you've got products that contain oils that contain butters that contain silicones that contain hydrophobic chemicals inside that aren't allowing that water to penetrate if you were to wash all of that off use a really clarifying shampoo and get all the residue off of your hair you would find that your hair takes up moisture a lot better another reason why our hair can take ages to get wet is the texture okay asian people who have notoriously low porosity like i previously mentioned eight layers of cuticle thick densely packed and really closed cuticles. They tend to have straight or silkier, straighter hair, which means the water can just penetrate a lot easier. Now, if I, with my kinky, coily hair, go and dunk my hair in the water, there's gonna be parts that bead off of the top of my hair. And given that my hair density is so kinky, I need to like open up my hair when I'm in the shower to get the insides wet. That's nothing to do with my porosity and that's everything to do with just the actual texture of my hair. So don't think that because your hair takes long to get wet in the shower that that means that your hair is low porosity. And if you see water beading off of your hair like it's not absorbing at all, babe, that's not because you're low porosity either. Those are silicones, those are oils, those are hydrophobic particles in your hair that are actively stopping that water from penetrating and that's exactly why you need to use a shampoo to get all those things off so that water can penetrate your hair you see it all comes full circle really i wouldn't say porosity has nothing to do with these things but it's rarely the cause of these things if that makes sense like, so if our hair isn't low porosity why does it take long to dry that's another another question that i get a lot if our hair's not low porosity, why does it take so long to dry? And the long story short is your drying time is heavily influenced by the products that you use. You put a cream on your hair and a leave-in, your hair will dry a lot quicker than if you use a gel. These products are formulated and designed to keep water into your hair. Because like we previously, like I previously said, oils, butters, they don't actually moisturize your hair. Water is the moisturizer. That moisturizer you're adding is just formulated to keep that water in your hair. It's doing its job, right? You put that product on when your hair's wet and the product itself is also formulated with water. So there's water in the product, there's water on your hair, and that product is designed to lock that moisture into your hair. So your hair's obviously naturally gonna take a longer time to dry because you've got product on it that's literally designed to do that. You'd find that if you were to clarify your hair, clean it of like any sort of product, didn't put any products on it, and just let it dry, it would actually dry really quickly. I feel like the natural hair community just had certain issues, issues with their hair and they just didn't know how to explain these issues and so one person just did a bit of research, discovered what low porosity was and was like, yes, that's the answer to our prayers. We all have low porosity hair. And reality, we don't, okay? The sooner we start taking care of our hair like it is high porosity, the better that we can achieve healthy hair. Guys, I really want to know in the comments what you make of what I've just said because I feel like there are so many people that are hell-bent convinced that their hair is low porosity and I just want to like grab them and shake them and say, girl, 
you're not low porosity. You are not low porosity. Wake up, stand up. <sighs> but seriously, stop saying your hair's low porosity. For real, stop it, because it's probably not. Unless you can go weeks on weeks without moisturizing your hair, don't come to me and tell me your hair's low porosity, okay? Because you got a low porosity hair, but you've got to moisturize it every other day. Make it make sense. It's not making sense. The maths isn't mathsing, it's not making sense. But I totally understand where the natural hair community was coming from when this whole porosity thing came about. But I just don't agree. You don't have to co-sign if you don't want to, but I just wanted to put that information out there. So, I feel like I've rambled on so much. There's been so much information in this video. I literally don't even know what else to say. I hope I haven't made it too sciencey. I hope I've simplified things as much as possible. Um, I'm gonna try and do like little edits in between so that you can kind of see, but that's basically the gist. Now, now that I've given you all of this information about how our hair cuticle is, what do we do with that information, okay? Now, I have a separate video where I speak about how we can actually go about sealing our hair cuticle. So you know when people say, oh, LCO, you need to seal your hair cuticle with oil, that's basically trying to be a temporary fix to sealing your cuticle that's open naturally. Do you know what I mean? Putting an oil on top to seal your hair is a temporary fix. It's only going to form a layer on top of the cuticle. It's not actually going to open or close the cuticle. Now, there are ways to close the cuticle and I have seen a huge difference in using cuticle sealing techniques since I've been doing my hair. For example, this was my hair before I started sealing my cuticle versus after. And as you can see, my hair is like just so much healthier and happier because I've been sealing my cuticle more. So don't seal your hair with an oil, seal your cuticle with an acidic product. Now I'm not gonna go into detail about that, that's a whole separate video. In fact, I have a whole separate video speaking about how to acidify your hair, how to pH balance your hair back to the correct pH so that your cuticles can seal. I'll have that linked down below so you can have a look. Um, but after that, I feel like I've rambled on like forever. So I'm gonna let you guys have your time back. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me guys know what you think about the science-based tips. You know, I just never really thought about putting this out there, but if it's helpful, then that would be great. And if it is, then let me know. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.